we need to talk about your backhand. Here's the deal. I can tell you really like your forehand. You might run around it, you might try to cheat it, but every time I hit to your backhand, you don't ever do anything scary. That tells me I can just target your backhand and win the game. Touch my heart. All right, you guys, I'm kind of kidding, kind of not. Here's the deal. A lot of people are really uncomfortable with their backhand in the sense that they might just not know what to do to intimidate their opponents. Now, I used to feel maybe not as confident in my backhand as my forehand until I started learning something very important to advancing in the game of pickleball. And what I'm talking about is versatility. Because here's the deal. If you know how to hit a backhand slice dink, a topspin dink, a backhand lob, a backhand speed up, now you have all these options and your opponent won't target that backhand anymore because now you have all these different weapons. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you one of my most favorite backhand weapons and it's the backhand topspin speed up off the bounce. But before we get into all the swing mechanics and all the fun stuff, I need you guys to do me a solid make sure that you like and subscribe because you guys, it genuinely really helps my channel. And with that, I'll be able to keep producing videos of better and better quality to help you improve your game. So like, and subscribe, and now let's get into it. The backhand speed up. You guys, this is one of the most incredible shots you can have because it sets up so many points for you and your team to put the ball away. One of the reasons this shot is such a good weapon is because it carries an element of surprise. So when you do it correctly, it looks almost identical to a dink and it catches a lot of opponents off guard, giving you and your partner a massive advantage playing at the kitchen line. So let's get into how to hit it. So the first thing that we're gonna go through is your grip. Now this is going to be a two-handed shot. So it's really important that you have both your hands on the paddle. So I like to make sure that I have this index finger up on kind of the throat of the paddle and then make sure that this other hand is directly on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like from both sides. That is the grip. Now when you are hitting the shot, your left hand, that back hand is what's doing most of the work. This right hand is gonna be your stabilizer. It's really important that you know this, okay? So that's gonna be all things grip. The next thing that we're gonna go through is a swing path, okay? So it's really important again to know that this paddle is going to start with the tip facing down. Now, most of the times I see it around that five o'clock mark. So if you think of a clock, make sure that your paddle tip is down at that five o'clock mark to start. And then when you are hitting the ball, that paddle comes up to that one 12 o'clock mark. So that's what's gonna really give that brushing motion on the ball and give that ball top spin because you want it to dip down. Otherwise, it's just gonna go out. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is follow through. So it's really important to know that your follow through is gonna again contribute to the top spin on the ball. But before we get into that, a quick word. Oh, hey, if you're watching this channel, it probably means that you really like pickleball. And if you really like pickleball, you probably wanna get better at it, which means you should enroll in my free Mastering the Dink video series. What's gonna happen is you're gonna click the link below and I'm gonna send you one video to your inbox every single day for the next 15 days with a tip that's going to level up your dinking. Now back to the video. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is follow through. Now there are a couple different ways that I've seen this done. One is, for example, when I see Anna Lee Waters do this shot, a lot of times she'll go from that paddle tip down and it's coming all the way up and she's opening up so that her elbow is pointing that opposite side. So that's going all the way through the shot. That's one way that I've seen this shot have a follow through. I see other pros, um, actually stop their follow through before that and not come all the way up above their shoulder. So how, what that looks like, it's gonna be a little bit more compact. Again, that paddle tip starts down and they kind of brush up, up on the ball and instead of going up, they go through like forward, okay? That's gonna be a little bit more compact. So I wanna give you guys a closer look at what I mean here. So I'm gonna have you watch Lacey Schneenum hit this shot. First off, it's a beautiful shot. But second, I want you to watch her follow through. So paddle tip is down. 
and her follow through is a lot more compact so you won't see her whip her arms up above her shoulders it'll actually just stop forward in front of her body again i don't think that there is a cut and dry this is how you have to do it those are two ways that i've seen it done i know that i hit maybe more of a compact swing but maybe that's something that you just have to feel out and see what feels best for you so now you know what to do with your paddle, but what I'm about to share next is vital to executing this shot well, because the biggest mistake I see a lot of people make when trying to hit this shot is they have incorrect body positioning. Next, we're gonna talk about body positioning. You guys, I cannot express enough how important it is for you to be in an athletic stance and really low when you're hitting this ball. A lot of times when I see pros hitting this shot, their handle is at or even below their knee height. That's how low that they're getting with this shot. So if you're hitting this with straight legs right here, it's, it's probably gonna go out. So you wanna really make sure that you are low that you are able to see the height of the ball, the apex of that ball, that's where you're gonna wanna hit it, and really get down to that net level. That's gonna help you with the shot immensely. Second thing that's really important with body positioning is contact point, okay? You do not wanna contact this ball to the side of your body or behind your body. Anytime you are attacking a ball, it's very important that you are on balance, okay? So when you're hitting the shot, make sure that it's in the correct contact point zone so in between your knees and again you're positioning yourself to get to the apex of the ball so you might have to step back in order to wait for that ball to get to that highest point so you can go into your swing mechanics so i want to quickly go over what apex means so when the ball comes off the paddle and hits the first bounce the top of that first bounce is the apex that's where you want to be contacting this ball Next thing we're gonna go into is spots to aim, but make sure that you stay to the end of this video, you guys, because we're gonna give you a drill that's going to help you be able to put all these steps together because there's a lot of moving parts. So now we're gonna talk about spots to aim. So for this shot, there's primarily two places that I want you guys to practice it, and it's speeding up down the line, so straight ahead, kind of hugging this line area, and the other spot is kind of down the middle like you're splitting your opponents apart. The reason why we don't want to go all the way to the other opponent is because that ball is probably going to be going out. So you want to make sure that you're practicing right down the line and then going through the middle like you're splitting your opponents. So I wanted to give you guys an example of pulling this shot down the middle to split your opponents. So as you can see, Annalie kind of sees that there's a gap in between her opponents. So she's going to pull that ball right down the middle. So that's the first example. And then this example, I want you to watch Lacey Schneenum. Now she's gonna look at Annalie's body language and notice that her momentum is taking her left. So she's gonna pull that ball right down the side. So for the first drill, we're going to go ahead and just start with hitting 10 successful speed ups down the line and then 10 going middle. You're gonna have your partner right across from you on the kitchen line and they're gonna be giving cooperative dinks. Now part of this beginning drill is picking the right ball. So if you're off balance or if it's outside of your contact point, just dink it back, okay? Wait for a good one to work on that speed up because ball selection is a huge part of understanding this shot. All right, you guys, for this drill, it might be helpful for your partner to have a couple balls. And we're gonna just start off, I'm gonna be hitting 10 balls down the line. So again, I'm working on choosing the right ball. I'm not choosing some of these because they're very shallow. That's very hard for me to hit. That's a good one. So really this drill is just having you work on getting reps in. Again, really practicing your form and dialing in things like your paddle tip angle, follow through and everything like that. Once I finish 10 successful down the line, then I'm gonna switch to hitting 10 successful speed ups down the middle. Again, we are just working on getting reps in and kind of perfecting the form. All right, you guys, so for this next drill, this is gonna simulate more gameplay. So how it's gonna work is me and my partner are going to be across from the kitchen with each other and for the sake of the drill I'm going to be the only one that can speed up okay my partner is working on dinking and can counter but my partner cannot speed up so with that being said I'm going to be working on moving my 
partner around because I'm gonna be looking for either a shot down the line or a shot down the middle and I'm gonna look for the opening. It's really important that you do this because you can't just hit this shot anytime you want. You wanna set up the point. So that's the point of this drill. We're gonna show you how this looks. So as you can see, I'm right across with my partner and we're kind of in a dinking battle. My whole goal here is to move my opponent around and open up either that sideline or have them move to sideline so I can go down the middle. Again, I'm really looking to set up the point in this drill and be able to practice my shot at the same time. This is a great way to use this shot in a drill setting, but also simulate a game scenario. If you learned something new in this video, can you do me a favor and like and subscribe? That will help me bring you more videos like this in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.